Rogue Nicotine On Demand, delivered direct to your door. Available in all your favorite flavors and formats, pouches, gum, wintergreen, peppermint, and more. From your Monday morning coffee to watching hoops to dinner at the in-laws, Rogue Nicotine is there for you when you need it. Visit roguenicotine.com today and save 10% when you place your order for sugar-free, fast-acting Rogue Nicotine. Underage sales prohibited. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. For more information, visit roguenicotine.com. Rogue Nicotine On Demand, delivered direct to your door. Available in all your favorite flavors and formats, pouches, gum, wintergreen, peppermint, and more. From your Monday morning coffee to watching hoops to dinner at the in-laws, Rogue Nicotine is there for you when you need it. Visit roguenicotine.com today and save 10% when you place your order for sugar-free, fast-acting Rogue Nicotine. Underage sales prohibited. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. For more information, visit roguenicotine.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What is going on, Jeffrey Epstein Show fam? Before we get into anything, I just want to let you all know how amazing all of you are. We have eclipsed 1.5 million downloads. That is an absolutely insane number. Especially considering this is all organic. No marketing push, no big uh, corporations behind us. Hell, no help from anybody, really. Just your boy, his computer, a microphone, his beard, and a big old mouth with a lot of shit to say. But none of that matters if you folks aren't tuning in. So it's really all about you, all of those numbers and, you know, the stuff people always talk about, content creators, subscribers, blah, 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 blah. It all comes down to you folks. If you folks aren't buying in, if you folks aren't listening, if you don't care what anybody's saying, then obviously none of that would ever be achieved. So I'm glad that my message resonates with so many of you, but really... All of you should give yourselves a pat on the back for, for something like this. The dedication it takes fr- from you to sit down every single day and give me an hour or so of your time to talk about this case shows great dedication from all of you. Because what you're doing is, is you're giving up your life minutes for that. And there's no coming back from that. Sure, you could give some money, you could pay, you know... You can always make money again, right? You're never getting your life minutes back. That's your most precious commodity. And I'm honored that all of you choose to spend some of those life minutes with me every single day. So it's humbling as well. And I don't take any of you for granted. I don't take any of this for granted. This is, I never expected this show to resonate the way it does. This was never what it was intended to be. I never uh, carved out, you know, I I never planned to carve out 10 hours a day to work on this podcast, but I feel like it's worth it. I feel like we have come so far at this point, and I feel like all of the work that we've put into the podcast has, it, it, you know, it's come to a point where it's bearing fruit, right? We're seeing that these girls are getting paid out. We're seeing people get arrested. John Luke Brunel, I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at you too, Ghislaine. We see people who were involved, even in the an an outer way, perhaps, are having their own problems due to this Epstein fallout. And again, that can all be attributed attributed to you folks out there who have kept the pressure on. Myself and other content creators who are covering this case, we're just mouthpieces for you folks. You know, at least that's the way I look at it, right? I feel like we come onto this podcast every day and we have a discussion. We have an ongoing discussion that's been going on since October of 2019. And that's the way I approach this. Like, we're just a bunch of old friends sitting around, out at the park, hanging out, BSing. And I don't, I don't do any overproduction, as you all know. I don't, I don't even, after I'm done recording, I don't even listen to the episode before I upload it. I know what I said. 
I sat here. I said all of that shit. I don't need to edit anything out. And that is how it's been since the very start here. And that's how it will be until this case ends. I haven't missed one single day since October of 2019. At least one new episode every single day. And the more you folks email me and send me messages and and tell me that the content resonates, the more I want to pump that shit out, right? I enjoy talking with you folks and I have a lot of things in store for the new year so that we can engage with each other more. I'm going to be more active on Patreon. Um, You know, we'll figure out some uh, cool things to do for people who want to sign up for the Patreon. Maybe we'll have some sort of uh, adless subscription service where, you know, it costs like a buck or two a month and you can bypass all of the ads that come over the platform here. You know, there's just a bunch of different things that I have in the works that I want to incorporate to the podcast to make it, you know, as enjoyable as possible for everybody. I am also trying to work on some sort of way, devise a way that I can get audience calls and do one or two live shows a week where you folks can call in and we can discuss the issue on the air. I think that would be a cool, cool, cool option. And I know a lot of you folks want to discuss this. I I, I, can, I know for a fact, the way I get tagged on Twitter, the messages I get sent, I, I see them all. And believe me, I want to respond But there is a lot of messages that come through. And sometimes they slip through the cracks, right? So I think that if I set something up in the new year where I can try and get some kind of uh, situation where you folks can call into like a uh, some sort of phone line and we can discuss things live on air, man. I think that would be a definitely a cool option. I don't see enough of that with podcasts. And that's that's certainly something that I am exploring. I am also planning, as you all know, to go back to New Mexico. Big time plans to go back to New Mexico, uh, down to Zorro Ranch, and get some more um, information, right? This time I will be uh, um, equipped with a drone and some more recording equipment, and also some help bringing in the shock troops. What I learned the last time around, you know, is that I can't do it all myself. I can't, you know, record, um, upload. It's just too, way too much, and I don't focus enough on the task at hand, which is digging for information then. So when I head back in February, that's the tentative plan now. When I head back in February, I will have a few people with me so that I can delegate the tasks and I can focus on actually digging for the truth. So that's on the, that's on the table as well. Um, videos, YouTube, a, a new YouTube revamped YouTube launch of videos as a companion piece to the podcast that's coming as well um yeah so again i have a lot of things in store for 2021 and hopefully i will be able to focus like literally full time on the podcast in this coming year this past year i was focused on this podcast about mm, 85 or 90 percent but of course you know gotta pay bills right gotta the real life real life gets in the way and you'll you notice i'm a little bit slow on the weekends i don't uh i'm not as active and that's because with all of the games on and and stuff like that your boy has to try and make a couple of bucks but moving into the year 2021 it's going to be an all out blitz on this podcast i'm talking we might even move to some days where we're doing three updates a day I plan on being at the trial for Maxwell, all of that stuff, folks. So buckle up. We have a long ride ahead of us, but I wanted to just say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the support for the podcast, all of you who have donated money to the podcast to keep the lights on, all of you who have spent 
your most precious commodity with me, which is your life minutes. All of you who have sent me messages with constructive criticism, all of you who have been just completely supportive of the podcast, you're all the real MVPs. You're all the real heroes in this situation. And I am very, very, very humbled by all of the support that has been given to me and the podcast. So thank you folks very, very, very much. And moving forward, it'll just, it'll be the same old, same old. My nose to the grindstone here every single day. And moving the story forward as much as possible. All right, so before we jump into the article, I am actually headed out to do some camping in a little while, and I will not be back until tomorrow sometime, probably the afternoon. So today, there will only be this new episode. There will also be two more flashback episodes today. Tomorrow, there will be at least one new episode as well, probably two. It depends on what time I get home, though, and how tired I am, because I plan on crushing some miles today while I'm uh, looking for the perfect spot to get these shots. So expect two episodes tomorrow, probably, maybe one, but today, for sure, just this episode, um... There's already been one flashback episode uploaded today, and I am going to upload two more today as well. So that's the schedule for the next couple of days. And then once Wednesday comes around, right back into the normal morning update, daily drop, flashback episodes, bonus episodes, all of it. And then on the 30th, remember, we're going to do an Ask Me Anything session, the first one for the podcast. So there are all of the updates. There is a lot coming down the pipe. We have covered a lot of ground to get here. And I'll tell you what, all I see is more on the horizon because we are just getting started, folks. All right, so our article today is about the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family and the fact that he was at Windsor Castle a few hours after Mr. Brunel was arrested and guess what he was doing? Oh, he was there having a horse ride. Wait a minute. What? I thought that he can't have horse rides. I thought that he was allergic to horses. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's right. He went to a woods witch and he got himself some acupuncture and now he's okay. He can go roll around with the horses all he wants now. Absolutely ludicrous. Do they really think anyone is buying this garbage? This article is from Daily Mail. Headline. Prince Andrew leaves Windsor Castle just hours after Jeffrey Epstein's French modeling agent friend is charged with rape of minors. Not just held, not charged. All right? This article was authored by Jessica Green and Peter Allen. Prince Andrew was spotted leaving Windsor Castle today after enjoying a horse ride around the grounds. Uh, You know, how's this guy actually going to think anyone believes his bullshit? Oh, I'm allergic to horses. I can't sweat. Bitch, you were sweating while riding that horse. Nobody's buying your alibis. Your daughter didn't even corroborate your story. Okay? The one guy that could corroborate it, well, he happens to be dead. And here you are telling us to just believe you. Meanwhile, not only are you lying through your teeth, you're sweating through your shirt. His outing comes after Jeffrey Epstein's friend, French fashion agent Jean-Luc Brunel, was charged with the rape of minors and sexual harassment. Long time coming. We've talked about Brunel how many times, folks? In fact, maybe I'll put together a whole flashback series of all of the episodes we've ever done on Brunel. 
and put them out, at, you know, one after the other one day, like a six-part marathon series for everybody to go back and listen to. This isn't something that we've just jumped on here on the podcast. This is something we've been screaming about for more than a year now. We've been demanding this scumbag's arrest. You know, he's, you remember how when America went into Iraq, they had the playing cards with all the Iraqi generals and shit on the playing cards, uh, depending on how, how much they were wanted? Jean-Luc Brunel is at the top of that list, right? Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein, Jean-Luc Brunel. And then under them were the core four, obviously. But Jean-Luc Brunel is a big get here. And I've been yelling from the top of every mountaintop that I could get to about this dude being arrested. And thankfully, now he is. And not just arrested, but charged with the rape of minors. The sentence for raping minors should be life in prison at the least. And chemical castration as well comes with that. I am 100% in the camp of people being chemically castrated if this is the behavior they engage in. Brunel, 74, was indicted late on Friday night amid allegations including those of a woman who separately claims she was also trafficked as a teenager to the Duke of York. Look, Jean-Luc Brunel definitely knows Prince Andrew as well, okay? The Joe Exotic of the Windsor family 100% knows Jean-Luc Brunel. I don't care what any of his people say. I don't care what anybody says at this point. You are not going to tell me that these people don't know each other. All of the stars align for that to be the case, right? Ghislaine Maxwell and Jean-Luc Brunel, very close. Ghislaine Maxwell, Prince Andrew, Super close. You really don't think that they were ever all hanging out together? Stop it. Virginia Roberts, an American, has told lawyers she was employed as a sex slave and forced to sleep with the Duke after being trafficked to him in London at least three times when she was 17. And it wasn't just in London. We know about Zorro Ranch. We know about New York. We know about London. And we know that Virginia has been steadfast in her story. Oh, sure, there are a couple of little inconsistencies, no doubt about it. Oh, the bathtub isn't big enough. As if that is going to sway anyone's opinion. And furthermore, I don't even believe that it's not big enough. You know what the saying is, right? Where there is a will, there is a way. Am I the only one who went to college here, folks? Come on now. Stop it. We all know that an enterprising young lad or young lady who is looking to have a good time can fit into a bathtub, all right? So don't tell me Prince Andrew couldn't have fit into the bathtub with a 17-year-old little petite Virginia Roberts. I do not buy that. Sorry, boys and girls. Miss Roberts also has said she had sexual relations with Brunel on several occasions between the ages of 16 and 19, according to legal papers filed in America and France. Why would Virginia lie about Jean-Luc Brunel? Especially considering what we know about him from all of the other girls who have come forward. You see, the, the narrative that Virginia or these other girls are lying due to a couple of minor inconsistencies is fugazi. It doesn't work. It doesn't land. It's a bad punch. You're throwing looping shots while the survivors are throwing straight blows. And as those looping shots are coming in, you're getting clipped on the chin. And you don't like it one bit, do you, Prince Andrew? Or Jean-Luc Brunel? Or Ghislaine Maxwell? For so long, you were the bully. For so long, you would hit people in the mouth And they wouldn't fight back. Well, guess what? You took one too many lunches. And now, the predator has become the prey. And these girls are fighting back. And guess what? They're pissed off. Their rage is hotter than a thousand suns. And there is nothing you or your legal team can do to stop 
the train of justice that has already left the station and is barreling down the tracks. Both Prince Andrew and Brunel deny these claims, with the royal considered a key witness who both the Americans and the French want to interview in person. That's the key there, folks, in person. If he was just a witness, they'd take a written statement, right? They want to pin him down. The French as well. What, you don't think the French want to hammer this guy as well? Some hard-charging French prosecutor doesn't want a feather in his cap, doesn't want to make a name? Hell yeah. If I was a prosecutor, these are the kind of people I would be charging my office to go after on a daily basis. Like Chuck Rhodes in Billions, but without the scumbaggery. I would be going hard against all of these so-called members of polite society. The eighth in line to the throne was spotted where his mother and father, the Queen 94 and Prince Philip 99, are currently isolating. Wearing a mask, Prince Andrew is seen at the wheel of his large Range Rover as he made his way up the long walk to Windsor Castle. This idiot just comes out and says, yo, I can't ride a horse. Then he's over at Windsor Castle. His mom's 95 or whatever. His dad's 95 or whatever. And this idiot is going over there to hang out. Forget COVID. You're going to catch stupid from hanging out with the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family. I swear to you, if this was my kid, I would I would um, put him in the Tower of London, lock him in the Tower of London, and then tell everybody that he ran away from home and nobody knows where he is. I mean, what an embarrassment. The eighth in line to the throne? A prince of the blood? An absolute black eye to the great people of England. It comes after Brunel was indicted late on Friday night, having been interviewed over two days by an examining magistrate and specialist police from the anti-pedophilia unit, prosecutors in Paris confirmed. Bro, that's so big. It is so huge that this guy is not just wanted for questioning. It is so huge that he has been indicted, that the French authorities have taken this seriously. And tip of the cap to the French authorities. Look, I am very critical when I have to be. But I'm not critical to just be critical. I'm not one of those people who thinks it's edgy to be critical of everything at all times. And when someone does a good job, hat tip. They deserve a hat tip when they do a good job. And the French authorities, for as much as I've maligned them, have done a good job here. Now moving forward, obviously, I retain the right to be skeptical. I retain the right to be cynical. And I also retain the right to absolutely eviscerate them if they do a piss poor job of getting a conviction. But when someone does the right thing, we have to be fair and we have to acknowledge that. And the French authorities, it would seem, are doing the right thing here. Thysia and the rest of the ladies from France, Virginia, and all of the unnamed girls, the faceless girls that Jean-Luc Brunel abused, they all deserve at the very least that. He was arrested at the city's Charles de Gaulle airport on Wednesday while trying to board a plane to Dakar, Senegal, telling detectives, I'm going on holiday. No, you're not. Breaking news, monsieur. Your plans have changed. You are no longer going to Senegal. You will be eating cheese, drinking wine in a French jail. Brunel is suspected of having been part of a global underage sex ring organized by the late American multi-billionaire, huh, funny they say that, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein, who committed suicide last year while awaiting trial for numerous sex crimes, allegedly. Others have said to be involved in the ring include Epstein's ex-girlfriend, co-conspirator, fellow child abuser, general all-around scuzzbag and bipedal serpent, Ghislaine Maxwell, 58, who is currently on remand in America after being charged with the sex trafficking of underage girls and the enticement of minors. A French judicial inquiry into Brunel's conduct was opened last August when prosecutors heard allegations that Brunel and the Queen's second son shared a lover. So again, Virginia is the catalyst here. 
And that is why Virginia has been such a lightning rod. That is why you have seen an all-out assault as of late from some so-called journalists in an attempt to demean her and discredit her accounts. But it's falling on deaf ears. You might get a couple of morons who buy into it. People who are, I don't know what your problem is, honestly. Really, if you're attacking these survivors, you honestly have a problem, like a mental health problem. And I say that seriously. You can be critical of the story without attacking these survivors personally. And some of the shit I see, I see people say on Twitter is the kind of shit that if you were to say that in person at a bar or something, you're probably going to end up having words with somebody. And in my estimation, most of you that are on the internet pounding away with your fingers, talking trash like you're hard, like you're some sort of tough guy, it's not the case. Most of the times, the people that are running their fat yaps on the internet, like they're tough, like they're this, uh, you know, badass MFer, are really the biggest chumps and cowards in the whole entire world. And that's why I don't engage with it. Because I don't have the time for that. I don't, you know, where I'm from, we don't, we don't get down like that. And I'll just leave it at that. Virginia Roberts, an American, has told lawyers she was employed as a sex slave when she was forced to sleep with the Duke after being trafficked to him in London at least three times when she was 17. Look, Prince Andrew has some explaining to do. All right? Some big time explaining to do. And he has not even begun to scratch the surface. Miss Roberts also said she had sexual relations with Brunel on several occasions between the ages of 16 and 19, according to legal papers filed in America and France. Both Prince Andrew and Brunel deny these claims. So, even if somebody was 19, I don't care if you're 30 and you're, and you're caught up in a sex trafficking ring, you are a victim, all right? And I'm not talking, look, we're not talking about prostitution or anything like that. Look, I'm not against brothels, legal brothels and all of that jazz. I, I think that sex work is always going to be there. And to try and get rid of it and try and use a prohibition type of method against it only makes it more dangerous for the girls. So instead, I think it should be regulated. How to go about that? Look, that's above my pay grade. All right. I'm not going to dive into the, the, the nuts and bolts of all of that because I don't have the answers. But I think that the way that sex work has been stigmatized and the way that it has been criminalized to the point where these girls go underground and stuff, I think it's very dangerous for the girls. And we see it. How many times do serial killers prey on streetwalkers? If it was regulated, then they'd have at least another layer of security. And now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm a proponent of, of um, um, uh, prostitution here. I'm not. I would never engage in anything of the sort. But at the same time, I understand that prohibition does not work. And I think that to safeguard these, these girls as much as possible, we have to have some kind of regulation perhaps. But the point of what I'm talking about here in the article I don't care how old you are. If you're sex trafficked, then you're a victim. Referring to Brunel, a French prosecuting source said on Saturday, the suspect has been placed under examination for the rape of minors and for sexual harassment. The source used the term mise en examen, which is the French equivalent of a defendant being formally charged prior to a trial. Love it. Formally charged, not just in for questioning, not just a show me kind of arrest, formally charged with child rape. Enjoy your week, Mr. Brunel. The rape of a minor is punishable by up to 15 years in prison in France, while aggravated sexual harassment comes with a three year prison sentence and a fine equivalent to around 40,000 pounds. Wait, hold on. Only 15 years for the rape of a minor? 
Come on, man. Really? Let's add a zero to the end of that. Make it 150 years. 15 years. That's ludicrous. Brunel, who denies any wrongdoing, is likely to be held in custody until a criminal trial in the new year, according to the source. Oh, good. Him and, him and Ghislaine have something else in common now. They can be twinsies in their jail cells, one in Paris and one in New York. Meanwhile, guess what? The survivors are going to enjoy their holiday season this year, folks. How about that? Brunel is also suspected of using his contacts in the fashion industry to provide victims to Epstein and his friends. He is said to have flown three sisters from a Paris housing estate to America so they could be abused by Epstein as a birthday present. Sickening. Sickening, sickening, sickening. And it when when I first read this story, I was enraged, bro. Twelve-year-olds, three of them, flown in from Paris and nobody stops this. Nobody gets involved. Nobody grabs Epstein by the head and pushes his face through a wall. I'm not built for this kind of shit. The anger was red hot and it still burns just as hot today. I can't even imagine how anyone can read about this, hear about this, and not want these people to be put in prison for a bazillion years. Epstein, an old friend and business associate of Brunel's, committed suicide in his prison cell in New York on August 10th last year while awaiting trial for a range of offenses, including trafficking minors for sex and multiple rapes. So, trafficking minors for sex, right? That means he was providing them to other people. Let's get some of these other people involved now. We got Ghislaine arrested. We got Jean-Louis Brunel arrested. Let's get the rest of them. Put in the bracelets. You know what'll happen, right? I'll be camping tonight and arrests will happen or some shit. (laughs) That's how it always works, doesn't it? Among his alleged victims, it is claimed in court documents were the 12-year-old triplets from Paris. Brunel was the founder of MC Squared, the modeling agency, one of that prosecutors believe was used as a cover for Epstein's sex trafficking ring. It definitely was. We know about the apartment building. We know about the girls that inhabited it. We know that Brunel was going all over worn, torn, and broken countries in Eastern Europe and elsewhere to bring poor girls to Jeffrey Epstein to be abused. We know all of this. It's about time that the legacy media jumps on board as well. Oh, and you thought I forgot? Steve Mnuchin has some answering to do as well. He has deep ties to the Brunel brothers, according to paperwork. And I know I posted that episode, uploaded it uh, recently. I think I might upload that one again. That's a very important episode. So look for that episode to come again. You folks should definitely listen to that one if you haven't. It's an important episode. Steve Mnuchin needs to answer for his relationship with the Brunel. Corrine Dreyfus Schmidt, Mr. Brunel's lawyer, has insisted her client is innocent of any wrongdoing. Evidence against Brunel comes from a number of former models who have waived their anonymity to make their allegations public. New Zealander Zoe Brock has claimed in statements made to French investigators that she was abused in his Paris home in the early 1990s. A Dutch model, Thysia Hoosman, who, has, who was 18 when she first stayed with Brunel, said she was raped by him in 1991. And again, I can't express enough how happy I am for Thysia. What she... When I first saw her story and I first, you know, talked with her a little bit on Twitter, I was blown away. This asshole sick bastard was able to get away with this for so long. And girls like Thysia and Virginia and Zoe and all of the other unnamed girls that were abused were just left to twist in the wind like they didn't matter. Like they weren't human beings and and they were just, you know, disposable. Well, I'm here to tell you, man, nobody's disposable. I'm so tired of that kind of shit. How long are we going to be mean and evil to each other? 
If we take care of each other, you know, the people in our lives, our friends, our family, our neighbors, then we don't got to worry about the, the government coming in to try and help or save the day or people begging the government to come in to save the day. It all starts with you. She is now one of at least four alleged survivors represented by Anne-Claire Lajeune, a Paris barista who said Brunel being in custody was a huge relief because their complaints now take on meaning, she said. Yes, they've been validated with this arrest and it's a huge deal, a huge deal. This one ranks up there with Maxwell. Very close, folks. Very, very close in my opinion. Brunel was a sick, disgusting bastard. And him being off the streets, him being in a jail cell, is only a good thing for everybody. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. To everybody who has helped keep the lights on around these parts, thank you folks very, very much. And I'd also like to give a quick shout out to Twitter user Lone Star Road for all of the great research and dedication they have shown to bringing things to light in the Jeffrey Epstein case. All right, everybody. Like I said, this is the only new episode today. The rest will be flashbacks. I hope all of you get a chance to check out this Christmas star tonight, and I hope all of you have an amazing day. I will be back tomorrow. You might think President Barack Obama and music icon Bruce Springsteen are unlikely friends. But for more than a decade, the pair has built a relationship around their shared sensibilities and values. Now you can listen to their poignant conversations about fatherhood, race, marriage, music, and the country that's given them both so much. Click the banner to play Renegades, Born in the USA, a Spotify original podcast produced by Higher Ground Audio. Presented by Comcast. Try Good Catch Foods for 100% plant-based seafood that is truly off the hook. Saving the ocean feels good and the taste delicious. Go to goodcatchfoods.com to learn more or shop online.